A Stuart 7A model steam plant. Part 28, piping the water to the Stuart boiler feed pump. To be more exact, I need to pipe the water from the water tank to the inlet of the steam pump, and then the outlet of the steam pump needs to go to a check valve, and I was hoping to put the check valve in this position. I've removed the blanking plug from this bush in the boiler, and here is a quarter by 40 threads per inch check valve. Made by Chris English at CME Engineering and available from blackgates.co.uk. There is, however, a bit of a problem, nothing wrong with the check valve, but the boiler bush is too close to the centre flue. Whether this is a mistake by the builder, or it's on the drawing in this position, I don't know, but the check valve won't fit, so I'm refitting the blanking plug. Both the hand pump and the steam-powered boiler feed pump will have to inject the water through this check valve. I could make a special mounting to fix two check valves to the boiler, but instead I'm going to do it this way, by mounting a T-piece on the existing pipe to the check valve. I need to cut this pipe on the marks and silver solder a couple of coned unions on the ends of the pipe once it's been cut. This clip shows me just tightening up the pump. When I was undoing the union nut I did notice that it was a bit loose, but it's okay now. Here's the kit of parts required to mount the T-piece in the middle of the pipe. I've cleaned up the ends of the pipe using a piece of Scotch-Brite and I'm going to silver solder one of these on each end. This is one of the Union Cone adapters I'm going to use. It's 3 sixteenths to 5 30 seconds. I haven't shown the silver soldering process. I've made a lot of videos about silver soldering, so I do not wish to hammer the point. This clip shows you the general idea. This is the outlet of the pump, which will connect to this T-piece. I think I'll just take a moment to explain something before all the experts start twitching and writing in. In principle, this idea should work. In practice, though, it seldom does. On the outlet of the hand pump is a check valve. This is built into the pump, and the ball inside the pump lifts as you pump the water. But owing to the travel of the ball in the pump, once the steam pump starts to work and applies intermittent water pressure to the ball valve on the outlet of the pump, this is not a satisfactory arrangement. I need to put another check valve between the hand pump's outlet and the T-piece. As this episode is about piping the pump, I'm going to put that off until another episode. This is the water inlet union cone and nut from the Stuart steam pump. This massive union nut does not fit my adapters. The only thing to do is to make my own union cone adapter. I'm starting off the job using a piece of brass hexagon. Why hexagon? It's unimportant. It's just that I have a lot of these small pieces. I need to turn this piece of brass to a diameter that will be a smooth fit in the hole in the union nut. That is the threaded part of the hole in the union nut. Then I need to further reduce the diameter of the piece of brass, but not all the way down, so the nut fits on it like this. It's not going to be very successful as a union cone unless I drill a hole in the end of it. First of all with a centre drill, and here I'm using a 3 16 of an inch diameter drill, but I'm not drilling all the way through. I drill part of the way through with this drill bit to take the pipe, then I drill the rest of the way using a 5 30 seconds of an inch drill bit. Now I need to create the cone, and this is really easy. The cone angle is exactly the same as my cutting tool angle. The same angle as the centre drill, which as far as I'm aware is 60 degrees. How very convenient. Once I'd created sufficient of the angle using the carbide tip tool, I changed that for a parting tool and parted off the component. Nothing difficult here, you just have to think through the running order for cutting the part. Is it going to fit? Yes, it fits very well indeed. Fitting the short piece of pipe from the pump's outlet to the T-piece was easy. And here it is after I silver soldered it all together. Now I need to connect a longer pipe from the water tank to the water inlet of the Stuart pump. I've silver soldered a union to one end of a long piece of copper pipe. I need to fit the water tank in position, but I'm being very careful that the other end of the pipe doesn't scratch the baseboard. I bent the end of this water pipe in the right place to go into the union cone that I made. Once I've tightened up the union nut on the pump, that's it, we have a water system. Making pipe runs like this can be quite difficult. 
I've made so many pipe runs over the years, I can do it in my sleep. Well, maybe not literally. The more you do it, the better you get at it. If you want to do some pipe bending, I don't recommend that you do it with the pipe straight away. Use a piece of stiff wire, get the bends in the right place, then duplicate the bend positions on a piece of copper pipe. In this clip, I'm replacing the blanking plug in the bush at the other end of the boiler because I don't need to use it. I could have used an inline check valve, but I don't like those, they don't look very good. Time now to connect the live steam pipe from the tap on top of the boiler to the inlet of the superheater. When I look at the job, I realise that I do need to put a water bypass valve on it. That way the steam pump can run without filling the boiler. And I think it's into this assembly that I will build a check valve. There's just enough room for this assembly at the left hand side of the T-piece. More details will follow in a future episode. In my box full of old red coloured valves with chip paint, I found this, a quarter by 40 steam valve. I fitted this into the steam manifold on the top of the boiler, and it will allow for a very quick and easy connection of compressed air into the system, should the owner need to run the engine using compressed air instead of steam. Time now for an oiling frenzy. Using lubricating oil, I'm oiling every part of the engine that moves, and likewise, I'm oiling every moving part of the pump. I haven't shown it on camera, but I did put some oil down the feed to both the pump and the engine. I had to temporarily disconnect the steam pipe to do this. Time now to see what works and what doesn't work. With the compressed air connected, the engine bursts into life. And as you open the valve to the pump, so does the pump. Next thing, let's see whether the pump pumps water. I'm pouring some into the water reservoir, and you can see the level climbing up the water gauge. In the next episode, I'll be giving this steam plant a steam test. And one thing I need to do for a steam test is fill the boiler. I could take the safety valve out and put a funnel in there, but no, I'm going to do it the scientific method, which tests the functionality of the pump. As I move the hand pump, I can feel that it's pumping water, which is a good thing. When I first admit the compressed air to the steam pump, it seems to work okay, but it's actually pumping air. I can see it bubbling up inside the water reservoir. Although now it is starting to pump water. As I slacken off the union nut on the outlet, lots of water comes out of there. When I turn up the pressure of the compressed air, the pump does this. To make the pump do this, I'm quickly opening and shutting the steam valve. The main point is, it should not do this. The reason it's doing this is because it's not really pumping water against any kind of pressure at the boiler end. I'll look into this further after the steam test in the next episode. All I've got to say now is stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.